Let's get right into it. Number 7. The Breakfast Betrayal. Picture this. You roll out of bed, hair in full mad scientist mode, and the first thing your brain whispers is, sugar, now. So you grab a glazed donut or a caramel latte and think, breakfast of champions. Except your brain is about to roast you harder than your coffee beans. See? Your brain runs on glucose, the same sugar molecule that fuels pretty much everything from a toddler's tantrum to a marathon runner's final sprint. But when you slam it with refined sugar first thing in the morning, your blood glucose skyrockets like it just bought a one-way ticket to the stratosphere. And when that inevitable crash comes, your brain gets hangry. Like, I hate everyone and everything hangry. In that dip, the parts of your brain responsible for focus, memory, and emotional regulation start misfiring. You get brain fog, impulsivity, and that delightful existential dread that makes you rethink all your life choices. Scientists call this reactive hypoglycemia. You call it the 10.30 a.m. slump. Now, contrast that with a breakfast high in protein and complex carbs, eggs, oats, maybe some fruit that didn't come out of a vending machine. Your brain loves that. It's like giving it slow burn jet fuel instead of tossing gasoline on a campfire. You stay focused longer, feel more stable, and you're less likely to panic text your ex just because your blood sugar tanked. So yeah, when people say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, they're right, but only if it's not basically dessert. Because the wrong breakfast doesn't just betray your diet, it betrays your brain. Number 6. Omega-3 Seconds and Brain Goo Your brain is about 60% fat, which means, technically, you're thinking with grease. And among that fatty mass, omega-3 seconds are the A-list celebrities. They're the kind of fat your neurons swipe right on immediately. Omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, walnuts, flaxseed, and some plant oils help build and maintain the membranes around brain cells. Think of them like the bubble wrap that keeps your neurons from popping under pressure. They also improve communication between brain cells, boosting memory, focus, and even emotional stability. Without enough omega-3 seconds, your brain's communication lines start to sound like an old dial-up modem slow, noisy, and occasionally disconnected. Studies have linked low omega-3 intake to mood disorders, slower cognitive processing, and even higher risks of depression. Basically, your brain turns into a laggy Wi-Fi signal in human form. What's more, omega-3 seconds help control inflammation a big deal, because chronic inflammation in the brain is like having an endless low-grade fever that slowly fries your circuits. Getting enough healthy fats is like sending in a squad of microscopic firefighters to keep the system cool and efficient. So next time you're debating between salmon and pizza, remember, pizza makes your soul happy for five minutes. Salmon makes your neurons happy for life. Number 5. Artificial Sweetener Amnesia You'd think zero-calorie sweeteners are the ultimate life hack. Sweetness, no sugar, no guilt, right? Well, your brain disagrees. When you taste sweetness, your brain expects calories energy to follow. But with artificial sweeteners, that energy never shows up. So your brain goes, wait, where's my fuel? And your metabolism gets confused. Over time, this disconnect messes with your hunger hormones, like leptin and ghrelin, which regulate appetite. The result? You might actually crave more sugar. Some research suggests that your gut microbiome also takes a hit. Certain sweeteners can alter the bacteria in your digestive system, which directly influences brain chemistry. Because yes, your gut has its own nervous system, the second brain, and when it's upset, your actual brain feels it. It's like you told your brain a sweet little lie, and now it doesn't trust you anymore. That Diet Coke might not be adding calories, but it could be adding confusion. So, while your sugar-free drink won't make your genes tighter, it might make your brain a little dumber about hunger, and that's a trade-off worth thinking about next time you reach for that neon-colored zero-cal soda. Number 4. The Gut-Brain Gossip Line Imagine your gut and brain are two best friends who can't stop texting each other. The gut's like, hey, I'm bloated. And the brain replies, cool, let's feel sad about it. That's the gut-brain axis, the most passive-aggressive relationship in your body. This line of communication is run by the vagus nerve, which basically acts like a gossip hotline between your stomach and your skull. And the gossip? It's biochemical. The bacteria in your gut, your microbiome, produce neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, the same chemicals that control your mood, motivation, and anxiety. In fact, around 90% of your serotonin is made in your gut, not your brain. Yeah, your feel-good hormone is literally born in your intestines. So when your gut bacteria are happy eating fibers, probiotics, fermented foods like yogurt or kimchi, your brain tends to be happy too. 
but feed those bacteria junk food, excess sugar, or processed garbage, and they start dying off like extras in a zombie movie. That imbalance, called dysbiosis, can lead to inflammation, which affects your brain's ability to regulate mood and focus. In short, your gut throws a tantrum, and your brain catches the emotional shrapnel. That gut feeling you get, it's not a metaphor, it's biology. When your stomach's ecosystem is thriving, your brain feels balanced, calm, and alert. When it's not, you feel anxious, tired, and vaguely homicidal toward anyone who chews too loudly. Basically, you're not just what you eat, you're what your bacteria eat, and they're very judgmental. Number 3. The Chocolate Paradox Here's the good news. Chocolate is brain food. The bad news? Not all chocolate. So before you start defending your 2 a.m. brownie habit, let's get scientific. Dark chocolate, the bitter, grown-up kind with at least 70% cocoa, contains flavonoids, caffeine, and antioxidants that improve blood flow to the brain. Better blood flow equals better memory, focus, and reaction time. Cocoa even stimulates the release of endorphins and serotonin, giving you that lovely I'm in love or possibly just hyped on sugar feeling. But the sweeter, milkier kinds of chocolate? They cancel all that out. Too much sugar and fat drowns out the benefits, turning what could have been a brain boost into a glucose-induced regret spiral. It's the culinary equivalent of hiring a great personal trainer and then skipping every session to eat cupcakes in your car. Still, a small piece of dark chocolate can reduce stress and help your brain chill out literally lowering cortisol levels. So yes, chocolate really can make you happier, just not when it's hiding under a mountain of caramel and self-deception. Your brain likes chocolate, it just doesn't want it to come with a side of frosting. Number 2. The Protein Power-Up Imagine your brain as a hyperactive toddler trying to build Lego castles out of amino acids. Protein is what gives it the raw materials, literally the building blocks to make neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. These are the chemicals that decide whether you're happy, motivated, or just aggressively staring into the void while scrolling TikTok. When you eat protein, your body breaks it down into amino acids, which then travel to your brain. One of those amino acids, tyrosine, helps create dopamine, the motivation molecule. So if you've ever wondered why you feel more focused and upbeat after eating eggs or chicken instead of pancakes and regret, it's because your brain just got a nice dopamine refill. Meanwhile, low-protein diets can throw off your neurotransmitter balance, leaving you moody, unfocused, and mentally sluggish. It's like trying to run a high-performance sports car on orange juice. It's not going to end well. But there's a catch. Too much protein without enough carbs can make tryptophan another amino acid that helps produce serotonin less available to your brain. So you get wired, but not happy. It's why ultra-high protein, no-carb diets can sometimes make people grumpy even while they're getting fit. In other words, your brain doesn't want a bro diet. It wants balance. A mix of protein, carbs, and fats keeps the neurochemical party going. Because when your neurotransmitters are happy, you're happy and probably less likely to cry at a commercial for paper towels. Number 1. The Junk Food Brain Drain Let's talk about the villain of this story, the modern processed diet. Burgers, fries, chips, candy, basically the Mount Rushmore of temporary happiness and long-term regret. Ultra-processed foods are engineered to hijack your brain's reward system. The perfect combo of fat, sugar, and salt lights up your dopamine pathways like a Christmas tree. For a moment, it's bliss. But your brain quickly adapts, needing more and more stimulation to feel the same joy. It's the same basic mechanism behind addiction just with fries instead of pharmaceuticals. Meanwhile, those foods cause inflammation and oxidative stress in the brain, especially in the hippocampus, the area responsible for learning and memory. That means too much junk food doesn't just make you sluggish. It can literally mess with your ability to think clearly or remember stuff. One study found that people who ate more processed food scored lower on memory tests after just a week. A week. Your brain is like, I thought we were in this together, while you're out here eating your fifth bag of chips. And then there's the emotional side. Processed diets are linked to higher rates of depression and anxiety. Why? Because your gut bacteria, your neurotransmitters, and your inflammation levels are all connected, and junk food trashes the whole system like a frat party in a rental house. The more you eat real food stuff that grew, swam, or walked before it hit your plate, the better your brain performs. It's not just about health. It's about not living life in a permanent brain fog powered by Doritos and broken promises. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.